9 a.m. You're watching NDTV's Breakfast Bulletin. I'm Parmeshwar Bhava. A lead story this morning. Both houses of parliament were adjourned yesterday amid calls by opposition parties for a discussion and investigation into allegations of fraud against the Adani group that have triggered an unprecedented stock crash. Now, sources in the opposition parties tell us they would continue with their protest even today and will not settle for anything less than a JPC investigation into this matter. This even as Gautam Adani says the FPO was withdrawn to insulate investors from potential losses. Meanwhile, the State Bank of India has also clarified, saying there are no credit quality concerns. My colleague Arvind Gunasekar reports. Sadan ki karwai. The house is urgent. 2013 ko prathak 11 baje tak ke liye. Parliament witnessed repeated adjournments as opposition members stormed the well of both houses, demanding a discussion and investigation into the fall of Adani Group shares after U.S. short seller Hindenburg's report and its impact on investors. In a rare display of unity, the TMC, Aam Party, Samajwadi Party, and BRS which has stayed away from the Congress's Bharat Jodo Yatra, joined the opposition meeting. In all 16 parties led by Congress met at the office of Leader of Opposition in Rajya Sabha to chalk out a joint strategy to corner the government over the issue in the parliament. बनाओ और इसकी इंक्वायरी करो या नहीं है तो सुप्रीम कोर्ट के चीफ जस्टिस के नेतृत्व में कमेटी बनाकर इसको इंक्वायरी कराइए और डे टू डे रिपोर्ट बाहर करते जाइए यही हमारा डिमांड है और इसलिए मैं निवेदन करता हूं चर्चा करो पार्लियामेंट चर्चा के लिए है चर्चा करो आप ये ऑलवेज जब बजट सेशन शुरू होता है तब प्रायोरिटी रहता है फर्स्ट प्रायोरिटी रहता है राष्ट्रपति अभिभाषण में थैंक यू विंग मोशन का इसलिए मैं हाथ जोड़ के निवेदन करता हूं कृपया चर्चा शुरू करो दो द गवर्नमेंट हैज आस्क द अपोजिशन पार्टीज टू कोऑपरेट विद द मोशन ऑफ थैंक्स फॉर द प्रेसिडेंट्स एड्रेस फॉर नाउ द गवर्नमेंट हैज नॉट मेड इट स्टैंड क्लियर वेदर दे वुड बी अग्रीइंग टू द डिमांड्स ऑफ द अपोजिशन पार्टीज व्हाइल सोर्सेस इन द अपोजिशन पार्टीज से दैट दे विल नॉट सेटल फॉर एनीथिंग लेस देन अ जेपीसी प्रोब इनटू दिस मैटर एंड दे विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग विद अ प्रोटेस्ट इवन ऑन फ्राइडे With camera person Manoj Thakur, this is Arvind Gunasekhar for NDTV. Right, news just coming in. The National Stock Exchange has put three Adani Group stocks, Adani Enterprises, Adani Ports, Ambuja Cement as well under short-term additional surveillance measures. This is the latest that we can share with you. In fact, in a statement, S&P Dow Jones Indices has also said that Adani Enterprises will be removed from the Dow Jones sustainability indices following a media and stakeholder analysis triggered by allegations of stock manipulation this is the latest we can share with you currently the national stock exchange has put three adani group stocks now let me name them for you the three adani group stocks are adani enterprises adani ports and ambuja cement under short term additional surveillance measures as far as the snp index is concerned in a statement snp dow jones indices has said that adani enterprises will be removed from the dow jones sustainability indices following a media and stakeholder analysis which has been triggered by allegations of stock manipulation following the hindenburg report let's go across to priyanshi who joins us with the latest priyanshi take us through the latest developments first as far as the nse is concerned Uh, Parmeshwar, the National Stock Exchange has put three Adani Group stocks, as you mentioned, Adani Enterprises, Sports, and Special Economic Zones, and Ambuja Cement. Now, these have been put under the short-term additional surveillance measure. Now, why is this, why is this primarily been done because of the stock volatility that the <coughs> Adani stocks were seeing for the last few days ever since the Hindenburg report came out on January 24th uh, 24th alleging stock manipulation and fraud in the Adani group uh, the stocks have been falling and in fact the group has lost close to 100 billion US dollars in their overall valuation and just yesterday the stocks that we're talking about Adani ports and uh, 
Adani uh, Enterprises. Adani Enterprises lost 26% of their value yesterday, and Adani Post lo- Ports lost 7.2%. So because of this uh, stock volatility, um, uh, the, uh, the NSE has put them under an additional surveillance measure. So this means that there will be additional margins uh, that would be required to trade in these stocks. So investors essentially have to pay more upfront uh, upfront prices while taking positions. So it is to essentially uh, protect the investor interest and ask uh, to ask uh, investors to be more cautious because the stocks of course have been really volatile for the last few days uh, in fact uh, adani enterprises stock is at the lowest level that it has been ever since uh, june 2021 so the objective of this uh, uh, this uh, additional surveillance measure is to advise investors and to alert them to be extra cautious while dealing with these stocks and uh, by asking uh, investors to pay more upfront uh, uh, prices while taking uh, positions in the adani stocks it essentially asks them to be more alert so this has been done um, of course while uh, the stocks have been highly volatile recently as we have also mentioned that s&p global have also removed adani enterprises from the dow jones sustainability indices uh, so that's also uh, S&P uh, Dow Jones indices uh, it's a div- uh, division of S&P Global uh, so that's also uh, been done considering the volatility that these stocks have been seeing uh, so this is in the aftermath of the Hindenburg report as i mentioned which has alleged a stock manipulation right. and a, a fraud in the Adani group of companies right so as priyanshi mentioned five of the seven adani stocks in the hindenburg that were a report that were mentioned hit lower circuit yesterday this is the latest update that we can share with you as far as the nsc and snp is concerned um in yet another blow to the adani group the shares of adani enterprises will be removed from the snp dow jones sustainability indices Let's turn our attention now to Nagpur where in a major electoral setback for the BJP in one of its most significant bastions the candidate for the opposition Mahavikas Aghadi coalition defeated the party's contender in polls to a Maharashtra legislative council seat in Nagpur yesterday now what makes the results a huge blow for the BJP well it's that the constituency houses the headquarters of its ideological parent the RSS and it's also the home turf of prominent leaders like union minister nitin gadkari as well as deputy chief minister devendra fadnavis and let's turn our attention now to the northeast with the declaration of party candidates for meghalaya and nagaland bjp is all set for the crucial three state polls in the northeast later this month Remember starting with Tripura on the 16th of this month followed by Meghalaya and Nagaland on the 27th. BJP National President JP Nadda will start his campaign in the northeast from Tripura and for the BJP it's the first of the nine state assembly polls before the big 2024 general elections and therefore retaining its political dominance over the northeast is paramount. Party's biggest northeast face and Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma spoke to NDTV listen in. Joining us at this moment is Assam Chief Minister and somebody who is seen as BJP's biggest leader from the northeast Mr Himanta Biswa Sharma Mr Sharma battle lines are drawn for the three northeastern state elections how do you see your party's prospects I think uh, more or less I feel that uh, status quo in governance will be maintained so far as BJP is concerned BJP will emerge as a more important power in meghalaya nagaland we are going to form government with nddp and in tripura we are going to retain power by a bigger majority political watchers are saying that tripura election might be a tough battle for the bjp given the fact that the opposition has formed an alliance you have a, a regional party is doing well and just ahead of the election you have to change the chief minister party mlas have left so do you see some sort of discomfort uh if you look at from the from outside it looks like that there are a lot of activity in the tripura but the biggest asset for bjp is a goodwill of prime minister the garib kalyan program of prime minister and the kind of transformation bjp government in tripura has brought there was a rule of fear there was lot of uh, during the cpm rule there was a terror from government there was a terror from police 
party office and police thanas were same you you would have seen everywhere red offices along side of a police station now it is completely a new tripura so i believe a bigger and bigger uh, victory margins for bjp in this election and meanwhile assam will launch a major crackdown on child marriages in the state from today this is what chief minister himant biswa sarma has announced he's also said the police are investigating more than 4000 such cases of child marriage in the state this announcement comes after the assam cabinet resolved to double down on legal action against men marrying underage girls under the tough laws to protect children from sexual abuse as well as child marriages Now the chief minister Himant Biswa Sarma claims he has the opposition support in this crackdown and as per police sources the crackdown has begun since midnight for the latest let's go across to my colleague Ratnadeep Chaudhary but let's listen in to the chief minister and then go across for the latest update we will interrogate people in, intensely then the entire modus operandi will come into light or कल ये भी हो सकता है कोई गांव में जाएगा तो थोड़ा झड़प भी हो सकता है बिकॉज देर विल बी इंफ्लुएंशियल सेक्शन लाइक टू प्रोटेक्ट द परपेटेटर्स ऑफ क्राइम सो पुलिस इज रेडी तो कल से विल स्टार्ट पिकिंग अप पीपल देन विल इंटरोगेट एंड विल ट्राई टू ब्रेक द एंटेयर मॉडर्स ऑफ पर Right, Ratnadeep Chaudhary joining us with the latest update. Ratnadeep, your police sources are informing you that the crackdown began at midnight in parts of Assam, and there have already been a few arrests made. That's right. In fact, right from midnight, the crackdown has started. We are getting reports and uh, visuals and photographs of uh, you know people uh, being arrested and brought to local police stations across uh, different parts of the state. Uh, we are reporting from outside Dispur police station in Guwahati. Now, in Guwahati, uh, uh, under Guwahati Police Commissionerate, at least more than 50 people have been picked up till this point of time since midnight. and across assam we are getting reports of several hundred people being picked up in this crackdown which has started from midnight over 4000 cases uh, are pending and uh, most of them uh, have been booked under posco act because this after the state cabinet last month in the last cabinet decision decided that there would be a crackdown there would be legal and uh, police action taken against uh, particularly uh, people who are involved in child marriages and uh, therefore uh, this crackdown has started now when we asked the chief minister in terms of why this crackdown uh, is necessary uh, he uh, categorically said that uh, you know last month when uh, there was a review of the national family survey by the health department and in that review uh, it was found out that uh, you know the uh, mo- uh, remember the um, you know the maternal mortality rate in assam is the highest in the country and there was a review in terms of what can be done in terms of bringing the maternal mortality rate and Uh, the health department and the experts were of the opinion that uh, all the medical uh, and s- uh, social intervention which have been taken uh, uh, you know are not yielding that much of result and therefore a stricter action is rec- necessary and therefore uh, the state government uh, has decided for this crackdown where uh, police is being used uh, to you know uh, you know pick up uh, k- uh, people in pending cases old cases are, are been uh, opened up and also here uh, what the chief minister has categorically said that uh, there is no targeting of any particular uh, community given the fact that if you look at the number of cases registered in those uh, 4000 plus cases uh, you will see most of the cases from lower assam which are uh, otherwise minority dominated areas but the chief minister categorically said that you know there is no targeting of any community and in fact uh, dhubri uh, district has highest number of such cases more than 300 followed by hojai uh, we are hearing that there have been lot of crackdowns uh, in uh, gwalpara district in some areas uh, there have been local resistance also when police went to pick up pe- people that's what we are hearing from police sources right. and uh, throughout the day uh, this crackdown is going to ca- continue in fact this is not a one day affair that's what the police sources are telling us and we'll have to wait and watch in terms of how this uh, you know pans out across the state Of course so it is indeed not a one day affair the chief minister has announced that the police are investigating more than 4000 such cases of child marriage in assam now from assam let's switch our tracks to telangana where the budget session begins today with the governor's address to the joint houses of legislature this after the telangana high court asked the government and governor 
to talk to each other to avoid a constitutional crisis. For the latest for today, let's go across to my colleague Uma Sudhir who joins us live. Uma, what's the plan of action and what can we expect today? Today the budget session begins at uh, 12 uh, at noon, in fact at uh, 10 past noon uh, with the address of the governor to the joint houses of the legislature and the uh, all eyes are going to be on the governor for the simple reason that everyone will want to know whether it's going to be a government speech or a governor's speech as happened uh, in Tamil Nadu because there has been that kind of a standoff between the uh, government here, the BRS government here and the governor as well and it was almost a constitutional crisis that was leading to and some and had approached the court for it and the court had said that we should not be interfering in such a matter and that you should settle it uh, mutually and that's when the government uh, reached out to the governor because there could have been a constitutional crisis if the budget introduction was not in fact approved and okayed uh, by the governor. So uh, it's after two years that we are going to have Governor Tamilisai Rajan addressing the joint houses of both the legislature today. Uh, there are three things that we must watch out for here. Will the governor be able to read out the entire speech of uh, if the if it has been given given by the government and will she not make any changes because we have seen that uh, in the governor's speeches usually there is praise for the central government and uh, the prime minister Narendra Modi as well whereas the uh, BRS government here has been extremely critical of the center as well as of the prime minister and they have in fact even said in the union budget that uh, Telangana got a zero. So will the governor be able to go with something like that? The second part is will she introduce her own part uh, praising uh, perhaps the central government uh, or, or even the prime minister and uh, will that how will that be taken uh, by the state government? One must uh, also note that while this controversy, political controversy apart, we are expecting that the motion of thanks to the governor will follow and we are uh, expecting a cabinet meeting to happen on the 5th and on the 6th we are expecting that the state budget will be presented and this is the last budget before the state goes to elections later this year and therefore it's a very uh, tough act for the uh, BRS government here because they are promising many things to many people already you know uh, the welfare schemes whether it's the uh, Dalit Bandhu or the Raitu Bandhu pension schemes all of them together take away about 50 to 60,000 crore rupees and uh, with the kind of limits that the FRBM uh, on FRBM that's been now uh, imposed uh, not allowing the state government has been complaining that they are not being allowed to borrow more and they are being uh, made to uh, either uh, you know undertake uh, uh, reforms in the electricity sector which they don't want to do which they say will burden the consumers and therefore they are not able to borrow either so for, therefore it's going to be a very tough balancing act uh, for the finance minister as well if he is going to do all that the chief minister has been promising in terms of um, the uh, 2 BHK scheme as well and now uh, there is a new thing uh, which is also being spoken about, uh, about expanding the Dalit Bandhu scheme for larger sections. So uh, uh, the first focus today, of course, is going to be how this plays out politically between the governor and the government. Back to you. Let's see how this plays out between the government and the governor. But it is the last budget before the state goes to elections next year, as Uma pointed out. Let's see what this has in store. It's happening as the BRS government has accused the governor of acting like a BJP agent. We'll keep tracking the latest developments for you and the big stories. Slipping into a short break for now. Back in a moment. Legendary Tamil and Telugu, also Hindi film director K. Vishwanath has passed away in Hyderabad. He was almost 93 years old. Winner of the Dada Sahib Falke Award, five national awards, seven Nandi Awards and ten Filmfare Awards. Vishwanath is best remembered for his iconic 1980 film, Sankara Bharanam, that incidentally released on this very date. Regarded and called by many as Kala Tapaswi, among his most known films are Sankara Bharanam, Siri Siri Muva and Swayam Krushi. Swati Muthiam, that starred Kamal Hassan, was India's official entry for Best Foreign Language Film at the 59th Academy Awards.
After announcing the budget, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman said that it's the industries that will determine how India is going to move forward. Listen in to the Finance Minister's soundbite. Industry is the one which has to push it. <coughs> Industry is the one which has to come up with the picture which is prevailing, which is so dynamic and which is what... Uh, which is what is going to determine how India will have to move forward. So, one, on that ground, I think the ball is always in your court. You hit it first and then we respond. Uh, second is, for the government to, to facilitate and expedite, it is necessary that we get the picture of where we have our inherent strengths, first of all. There's no point in us trying to be ahead of the curve on issues which require a lot more for us to build on the fundamentals. The Gujarat Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation, famous for the Amul brand, has hiked the prices of milk by 3 rupees per litre across all variants. This is news that's just coming in. The Gujarat Dairy Cooperative Amul has announced a hike of up to 3 rupees per litre on fresh milk, which is effective immediately. Now, the price hike is being done due to an increase in an overall cost of operation and production of milk. This is what the company is saying currently. The cattle feeding cost alone has increased to approximately 20% compared to last year. This is what Amul has said in an official statement. Do remember, Amul last hiked its prices in October by 2 rupees per litre. And this morning, prices are effective immediately. The price hike, which is 3 rupees per litre across all Amul variants. With that, let's also move on to other news. National Security Advisor Ajit Doval ended his Washington, D.C. visit with a meeting with Antony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State. What was on the agenda? Well, major tie-up in critical and emerging tech and much more, my colleague Maha Siddiqui reports. National Security Advisor Ajit Doval ending his Washington, D.C. visit with a meeting with Antony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, adding on Twitter that they discuss deepening the strategic partnership between India and the United States. NSA Ajit Doval earlier met his counterpart Jake Sullivan for the first meeting under the initiative of Critical and Emerging Technologies or the ICET. The ICET aims to position the two countries as trusted technology partners by building technology value chains. Senior U.S. administration officials say this is even bigger than the landmark 2006 Indo-U.S. civil nuclear deal under Manmohan Singh, which had ended India's pariah status after the Pokhran nuclear test. Even as both sides were initiating the security initiative, it emerged that discussions are on for a visit by Prime Minister Modi at the invitation of President Biden, possibly in June or July. This assumes much significance as the Prime Minister would be making time for this visit during a hectic year of diplomacy when India is hosting both the SCO summit likely in June and the G20 summit in September. I'm not going to get into uh, commenting on such media reports. Uh, as you're very well aware, and I love saying this multiple times, I don't have a crystal gazing wall. Um, we will announce high-level visits at the appropriate time. At this point, I'm not aware of any specific uh, date or visit. However, as you know, there are visits going on um, there. And uh, so let me not prejudge anything. Uh, I saw some report, but I best, not, best avoided commenting on such reports. If this visit materializes, there will be at least three meetings between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and U.S. President Joe Biden in less than four months, starting from May when they'll be meeting at the Quad Summit in Australia and then the June-July dates that are being looked at for Prime Minister Modi's visit to Washington, D.C. And later that year, in September, President Joe Biden will be traveling to India for the G20 summit. Though China is clearly on the minds of both sides, but senior U.S. administration officials said that it's an effort that is larger than that, the U.S.'s desire to participate in India's rise. The White House says it is to elevate and expand the strategic technology partnership and defense industrial cooperation between the two sides. In New Delhi, Mahasiddhiti for NDTV. 
And the funds allocated to Mandrega, the government's flagship rural employment scheme, was cut drastically by 33% in this year's budget. Now, this is the sharpest decline in the past four years. Take a look at our analysis. 68-year-old Ruprati, like many wage labourers in this small village near Lucknow, is without work for the past seven months. She is compelled to borrow for survival, she says, because her family has not received work under the government's 100 days rural employment scheme since early last year. For many households in rural India, with no education and minimum skill, wages received under the scheme are their only source of income and social security. Many, however, have still not received their long due wages under the scheme. Sonu Verma's husband, for instance, is a daily wage worker, a mason who does sanitary jobs. He does not have a regular income, but Sonu's work at the Mandrega site is crucial to the family's income and to support the family of five. <laughs> The fund allocated to Mandrega, the government's flagship rural employment scheme, was cut drastically by 33% in this year's budget, the sharpest decline in the past four years. At 60,000 crores, the budget allocation to the scheme is lower than all Modi 2.0 years. This, even as the economic survey showed that nearly 7 crore households and over 15 crore individuals demanded work under the scheme last year. The government says that the demand for work under the scheme that helped the most vulnerable rural households survive the lockdown has fallen to pre-pandemic levels. We estimate that the actual level of genuine demand for Manrega is likely to decline in the coming year. Ye ek baat. Hmm. Lekin agar actual level of demand badta hai, to as we have done in the past, hmm. it can always be augmented during the year. Even though the demand for jobs under Narega has reduced, the fact of the matter is that an unusually high number of houses in rural India are still dependent on Narega for employment and income. Well, jobs creation is still a pipe dream for rural India and the benefits of economic growth are yet to percolate down to the grassroots. In Lucknow with camera person Vineet, Vedant, Fendi TV. Let's take a quick look at the international headlines. The United States is tracking a suspected Chinese surveillance balloon that has been spotted over US airspace for a couple of days. But the Pentagon decided not to shoot it down due to risks of harm for people on the ground. Now, the discovery of the balloon puts a further strain on US-China relations at a time of already heightened tensions. A senior defense official told Pentagon reporters that the US has very high confidence it is a Chinese high altitude balloon and it was flying over sensitive sites to collect information. The suicide bomber who killed 101 people at a decades-old mosque in northwest Pakistan this week had disguised himself in a police uniform and did not raise suspicion among guards, the provincial police chief, the chief has confirmed. Muazzam Jansari said the suicide bomber who arrived with a motorcycle to the mosque on a police compound had been identified. Police were close to arresting suspects in Monday's attack, one of the deadliest ever in Peshawar the capital in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. I have seen that in the camera, I have seen it, I have seen it cross-match, I have seen it and that is the same thing and that we have seen in the mosque the same thing as we have seen in the mosque that is one of the same things.
Republicans have ousted Democrat Ilhan Omar from her committee post in a sign of escalating tensions inside the US Congress. They voted to remove Ilhan Omar from the House Foreign Affairs Committee over her past comments about Israel. Now, Republicans say the move sent a strong statement against anti-Semitism. But Democrats and Omar say it was revenge after two Republicans were ousted from committees in 2020 when Democrats held a House majority. Ilhan Omar has also suggested she was being removed because she is a Muslim woman who immigrated to the US as a refugee. Ukraine's president has said that Ukraine deserved to start EU accession talks this year after talks with EU chief. And in June last year, EU leaders granted candidate status to Ukraine just months after Russian President Vladimir Putin sent troops to the pro-Western country. Both the path to full membership remains long and could take years. Єврокомісії ми досягли дуже важливих взаєморозумінь про те, що тільки разом сильна Україна і сильний Євросоюз здатні захищати життя, яке ми цінуємо. Про те, що Україні потрібна незмінна та повна підтримка у захисті від Росії. І про те, що ми маємо нашою подальшою інтеграцією давати енергію і мотивацію нашому народу боротися попри будь-які перешкоди і загрози. Я вірю, що Україна заслуговує вже цьогоріч підійти до відкриття переговорів про членство в ЄС. Now chat GPT seems to be the buzzword these days. People have been asking the chatbot various playful questions to test its capabilities and power. On NDTV, we demonstrate exactly what this new application is and how it works. What exactly is ChatGPT capable of doing? We decided to give this software some hard time. Let's get cracking. So let's ask some easy questions. First of all, define itself. What is ChatGPT? So we're going to ask this question. Let's see what it says. The reply is on the screen. What is ChatGPT? It says ChatGPT is a conversational AI, artificial intelligence language model developed by OpenAI. It's a variant of GPT architecture that's fine-tuned, blah, 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 right? It gives its own reply. Let's kick things up one notch. What are the limitations of ChatGPT? Let's make it uncomfortable. So I ask this question, starts answering, chat GPT, like any language, has limitation. Number one, it acknowledges it has bias. The model has been trained on a large data set of text. Number two, context sensitivity, limited common sense. So all those using this for homework or even for their college exercise, Factual accuracy, don't trust chat GPT. Chat GPT itself is telling you that. Sensitivity to language structure. It believes in five points what its biggest weaknesses are. So that's there on the screen right now. The big problems that chat GPT has. Okay, let's ask some teda meda questions. Let's see how updated the database is. So explain the new tax regime in Indian budget 2023. I'm sorry, but my knowledge is cut off. It is 2021 and I do not have information about the Indian budget 2023, but you can check the official government websites or reliable news sources for the latest updates. So it admits that its knowledge is cut off at 2021. That's a big problem which this software faces. Let's ask the software to do something which many people have tried uh, in the United States with their political leaders. I'm going to try it right here. Poem, poem on Rahul Gandhi. Come on. Here's a poem on Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi, a leader so bright, inspiring the masses with his sight. 
He walks with grace, he speaks with care, the nation listens, they are aware. With a vision so clear and a mission so true, he strives to bring and goes on and on and on, stands for the poor, for the marginalized too, with a heart full of love and a soul full of fire. The Congresses are going to love this and the poem goes on and on and on, still not stopped. It's writing a fairly long poem on Rahul Gandhi. And finally, it gets over by saying, here's to a brighter tomorrow with Rahul Gandhi leading the way with glee. So the congressmen would say, chat GPT is our thing, you know, it praises our leader. That's the thing. It praises Rahul Gandhi. Fantastic. How about a poem on Narendra Modi? Let's see what this software does. Here's a poem on Narendra Modi. Naren Modi, a leader of might, with a vision so clear and a heart so bright. Doesn't it sound a little repetitive? Maybe some paragraphs have been picked up from the Rahul Gandhi, uh, Rahul Gandhi poem. With a purpose strong and will so true, he strives for progress for me and you. He leads India forward even higher and higher. So here's to Naren Modi, a leader so rare. May his vision always be clear, may his mission be fair for a nation that's strong, people that's free, brighter tomorrow, with Naren Modi leading the way with glee. So basically, the Rahul Gandhi poem, words Rahul Gandhi replaced with Naren Modi. That's what chat GPT has done for you. So it is a, a sort of a people pleaser, if you put it in a political context. Okay, uh, Bollywood, better or South Indian cinema? with some hard time. It's subjective to say whether Bollywood or South Indian cinema is better as it depends on personal preferences and tastes. Ah, playing diplomatic, lovely. Exactly what I expected. And now it's going into regions. What constitutes South India? Both Bollywood and South Indian cinema have their... Ah, what a people pleaser this software. Let's ask some more questions. Best cricket team in the world. Let's see what it says. As of my knowledge cut off in 2021, the best cricket team in the world is determined by their ranking of the ICC and rankings can fluctuate, gives a long paragraph. So that's the good thing about this software, that it is going to give you a coherent paragraph or many paragraphs which you can then present as your own view. But do remember that it is open to interpretation. Let me ask another question. A lot of people have been using this to cheat. So how does one avoid cheating using chat GPT? I know I'm being notorious. If you want to avoid cheating using chat GPT, here are a few tips. Verification of information. That's point number one. Point number two, awareness of limitations. It could be biased or inappropriate. Factual accuracy, it says, please do check that. Use of multiple sources. So it's just a cool toy, basically. Don't trust it too much. Responsibility for outputs. Ultimately, the responsibility for the outputs generated by the model lies with the user. And then it says, it's important to use the model ethically and with the intention of generating accurate and responsible responses. That's what it says. So it's failed. We've established that uh, obviously it does not have a database beyond 2021. And most of the responses that it gives you are very dated. And might I also add, extremely diplomatic. ChatGPT believes in not offending anyone. Will it work? You try out.